ball in the actual building. Uh, unbelievable instruction. We could be proud of you. That is what the American spirit is all about. Congratulations. Thank you. Barack Obama thanked workers at Ground Zero for helping to reconstruct the hollowed ground. The hollowed ground. The president and first lady Michelle Obama signed one of the final steel beams that will be added to the tower, which will rise to a symbolic 1,776 feet when it is completed. Construction workers looked on as the president wrote, we remember, we rebuild, we will come back stronger. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from that which they have imagined to do. Go to. Let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. The president wrote, we remember, we rebuild, we will come back stronger. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Lightning struck the top of the New World Trade Center last night. No damage reported, but it was quite a sight. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. was felt on Saturday morning in southern and central Israel at around 10.30 a.m., a, a 4.1 magnitude on the Richter scale. The earthquake's epicenter was in Jordan, near the border with Israel, some 35 kilometers southeast of Mitz Ramon. A resident of Arad, a community in the Negev, spoke to Anant and said at roughly 10.29 local time I felt the ground move. 
Media reports in Jordan said that the earthquake was also felt in the southern part of the kingdom, where, according to reports, no damage or injuries were registered. Pope Francis's trip to the Middle East, making his first pilgrimage to the Holy Land as the pontiff, beginning his tour by meeting with the King of Jordan. He arrives two months after U.S. brokered peace talks collapsed, with both sides blaming the other. Pope Francis says he knows this will be a challenging but rewarding trip. Leland Vittert is in Amman, Jordan now with the tales of the pontiff's trip. Leland? Hi, Uma. Certainly the Pope is going to face challenges here, bringing a message of peace to a region that right now has anything but going on. That didn't stop, though, his arrival, which turned into a rock star-like entrance. Certainly here, folks in Jordan, very excited to see him, gave him a very warm welcome as he arrived. He's also bringing as part of his official delegation a rabbi and a Muslim cleric as well. Crowds were lining the streets for his motorcade on his way to the king's residence. Then he had a big mass here in one of the stadiums with Iraqi refugees, Palestinians, and also Syrian refugees coming out of that war-torn country. He spoke directly about the issue of the Syrian civil war and trying to bring peace and an urgent end to the suffering there. The other message that Pope Francis has brought to this country and this part of the world is the issue of religious freedom and all of the religions, the Muslims, Christians, and Jews being able to live together in harmony and practice their religion with freedom. Remember here in Jordan, it is about 90% Muslim here, and this goes to the Jordanians trying to really make over the image of their country here. All over this country right now, Uma, are billboards featuring the king and the pope saying, together we make peace. عن هذه الشخصيات هذه الصور أعزائي المشاهدين صور مباشرة Religious freedom is in fact a fundamental human right and I can't fail to express my hope that it will be upheld throughout the Middle East and the entire world while acknowledging with deep regret the continuing grave tensions in the Middle East, I thank the authorities of the kingdom for all they're doing, and I encourage them to persevere in their efforts to seek lasting peace for the entire region. This great goal urgently requires that a peaceful solution be found to the crisis in Syria, as well as a just solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Just a short time ago, Pope Francis meeting with refugees and disabled youth in the Middle East country of Jordan. The Pope is there for the first of many stops on a three-day tour of the Holy Land. For more on the Pontiff's historic visit, we're joined now by Fox News religion court contributor, Father Jonathan Morris. Father, it's good to see you this afternoon. And Kelly, gr Kelly, great speaking with you. So describe for me the first day of uh, the Pope's uh, visit to the Middle East, so we're getting right sure. there to Jordan. Yeah, Jordan is a place of peace in the midst of this crazy atmosphere, which is the Middle East. And I think that's why the Pope would have gone there to highlight it. It's interesting, Kelly, that he chose not to go alone, but to bring two of his buddies, two of his friends from Argentina, one 
a Muslim imam and the other a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi. And he's going with them saying, listen, you know, this peace thing is not just theory. These are my friends. I've lived with them. I've worked with them. We can do it. And what's fascinating about this trip, I think, is that you never know what Pope Francis is going to say. It's true. Why is he so famous? Why is he so loved? Because he's gone off script. He's gone off script and he said things that are shocking on the one hand, but profound on the other. But you have to be very delicate because you go off script a little bit in the Middle East and the ramifications can be huge. So it's going to be a big test as well for his own diplomacy and that instinct that you were talking about with Bishop Jake just earlier. <laughs> you know, ex exactly. We're talking about the instinct and, and the Pope, while he's talking to all of these different faiths, he still keeps it, if you pardon the vernacular, Jesus style. Oh, absolutely. He's he's not suggesting that everybody can't be, uh, get down to the, the lowest common denominator and hide your beliefs. He's talking about Jesus. He believes in Jesus. He's given his life for the church because of Jesus, but he's doing it with respect for those who do not believe. And he's going and he's having 30 different events in 55 hours, um, a grueling schedule. And he's touching all the real hot button issues. He's going to the Holocaust Museum in Israel. He's going, he's going to the Western Wall. But he's also going to what he's calling the Palestinian state. Um, they're saying that officially. Um, it's not an easy um, road uh, to follow, but I think he's, he's saying this is a priority. Another huge thing he's doing, Kelly, is he's meeting with the uh, with the patriarch of Constant Constantinople, of uh, Bartholomew. And he's saying it's a scandal that we Christians are not mm -hmm. united. The fact that here we have 300 million, that's the number that the Orthodox are giving, of Orthodox Christians who are un not united with Rome because of the schism of 1054. Well, that's a scandal. What are we doing separated? And he's going and he's meeting and praying with the patriarch um, right there at the place of the resurrection of Jesus. He's saying, if we're going to get united, we better do it around Jesus. So what we're seeing then is an interfaith dialogue as well as an interfaith uh, approach to diplomacy, if you will, bringing everyone together and having that common thread of faith, hope, and love being applied. I, I think you're right, Kelly, and uh, we'll see if he says anything um, truly controversial. We know he's not afraid of doing that if he thinks it's the right thing. Um, I'm praying that his intellect and um, also his instinct be inspired by the Holy Spirit and that um, that unity and peace uh, can not only survive um, but, but flourish um, among human beings who have the same exact human nature, all of us. Father Jonathan Morris, we appreciate your comments, sir. Have a great day. Kelly? Thank you. Right. Well, Pope Francis wrapping up the first day of his three-day tour of the Holy Land. The Pope meeting with leaders of Jordan earlier today. Also sitting down with Syrian refugees before departing for the second leg of his visit to Israel tomorrow. Leland Vittert live in Amman, Jordan with more. Hi, Leland. Hi, Arthel. The Pope has certainly had a packed day. His first day here in Amman, Jordan, received a rock star-like welcome at the airport. Brought really two messages here, one being about peace in this region and the other being about religious tolerance. Earlier today, we hit the streets of Amman to figure out why that's so important, especially in Jordan. Speaking not only to Jordanian Christians, but refugees from Iraq and Syria, Pope Francis brought a message of peace to a region experiencing anything but. The official delegation includes a cleric and rabbi to stress unity and cooperation between the face. While 90 plus percent of Jordan is Muslim, many say this is the example of what a tolerant Middle East country should be. Just to look at these posters all over the capital, Pope Francis with King Abdullah, and the Arabic translates to, together we make peace. It is part of a campaign by the Jordanian government to transform this country's image from that of a broke backwater of the Middle East to a modern, vibrant society, and maybe most importantly, a popular, Western-friendly tourist destination. We need more tourists, we need more business in Jordan, because if the Pope came, and everyone, he see the Pope in Jordan, it means Jordan is a safe country, we don't have any problem in Jordan, and we hope many people, tourist people, to came in Jordan. Hallelujah. There are certainly high hopes and expectations for the Pope's visit. On the flight in, he seemed relaxed, yet mindful of what he called the challenges ahead. 
Going forward tomorrow, the Pope heads to Bethlehem where he will have a mass there. And then on Monday, he heads to Jerusalem, Arthel, to visit a number of the important sites in Israel. Back to you. Indeed. Leland Vitter, thank you very much for that report.